The book of Revelation, this is where we're turning to, the very first chapter. Revelation chapter 1, are you heading there? Amen. Very first chapter of Revelation chapter 1. It's good to see some of the young people have uh, their pen and pencil ready. I hope you're taking note. I hope you're not uh, uh, drawing uh, cartoons and whatever you. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to uh, Revelation chapter 1. Are you there? Revelation chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. And the Bible says that the revelation of who? Yeah. Of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him uh, to show unto his servants things uh, which must uh, shortly come uh, to pass. Yeah. And he sent and sanctified it uh, by his angel unto his uh, servant. Uh, take a note there of the word uh, servant there. The word servant there means uh, slave. But uh, it's not slave to sin, uh, it's slave uh, to righteousness. The moment that you and I accepted uh, Jesus Christ as our sa personal Savior, we become a uh, slave uh, to righteousness. No longer do we want to go back to this old world again, uh, to go back to Egypt where we are not only both uh, slave to sin, uh, but also slave uh, physically speaking. Again, uh, John was where again? He was on the island of Patmos. Notice now, verse 2. John says, uh, who bear record of, uh, what is it? He's bearing record of that, of what? The word of God. Word of, uh, God. Uh, as we've been looking at uh, the past uh, three Sabbaths, uh, the word of God uh, is under attack. Uh, and we're going to continue this theme. Uh, and also we're going to continue looking at uh, chapter 11 uh, of uh, the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. which uh, as I mentioned before, it is uh, our chapter in these last days. What does it say there again in verse 2? Who bear, John is speaking here, he bears re record of uh, the word of God and of the, what's the next word? Testimony. testimony. Now that's another word to keep in mind to outline there. The word testimony also means witness in the Greek. It also means witness. It also means what? Witness. Witness. That's what the word uh, testimony means. Uh, we're going to develop that by God's grace uh, a little more. It says, uh, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ uh, and of uh, all things uh, that he saw. So notice now, if you look at the context carefully, we're having a Bible study here. If you can look at the context carefully, John uh, used uh, the word uh, testimony. Then uh, he also use uh, the, the word, uh, well, word of God. And then he, he says uh, the things that he saw. So that means he was a witness. John uh, is sharing with us uh, the things that, uh, that not only the angel had revealed unto him, uh, but also the things that he personally had witnessed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Verse 3. And the Bible says, Blessed is he that do what? That readeth, uh, and they that hear the words uh, of uh, this prophecy, and keep those things uh, which are written uh, therein, uh, for what reason? Uh, for the time uh, is uh, at hand. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, what time was it when John uh, pinned down uh, those uh, words there? The vision there that he saw 2,000 years ago. Amen? But John said, wrote this for you and I living in these last days, uh, as if uh, there was no more time left. Uh, he says, uh, for the time uh, is what? At hand. Is at hand. So he says, blessed is he that readeth uh, and they that hear the words of uh, this book. So John, uh, again, the Bible says, uh, he was uh, there on this island because of the testimony of Jesus, because of uh, the, what he experienced uh, while following uh, Jesus Christ. Skip on down now to uh, verse uh, 9. Are you there? Amen. And the Bible says, I, John, who also am uh, your brother and companion, uh, how? In tribulation mm -hmm. and the kingdom uh, and patience uh, of uh, Jesus Christ uh, was in the isle uh, that is called uh, Patmos for the word of God. Uh, what was the reason why? For the word of God and for the next thing again, the testimony of Jesus Christ. What does the word testimony there also mean? Witness. Well, witness. Amen. Then it goes on to say, I was in the spirit on which day? The 
the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice uh, as of, of uh, a trumpet. So which day is the, the Lord's day? So, amen, uh, that's, that's Saturday. You can, you can say that uh, louder. That's Sabbath, that's Saturday, which is what we call Saturday today. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus tells us uh, in um, the book of Mark, uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 27 uh, and uh, 28, uh, he says, uh, the Sabbath was made uh, for men uh, and at men uh, for the Sabbath. Uh, therefore, the... S s you don't remember this? The Son of God is also Lord of the Sabbath day. So which day is the Sabbath day? Saturday. It's a Saturday. So John was on the island of Patmos because of the testimony that he bore. Remember the word of testimony there. As we've been looking at uh, in Revelation chapter 11, what happened to the, those who tried to carry the, this uh, testimony, the, the word of God, what happened to them? Go now ba back again to Revelation chapter 11. Which book are we going to? Revelation, Revelation chapter 11. Again, uh, we are still looking at this theme uh, about the word of God. This precious book that has been uh, handed down to you and I. You know that song uh, that says, uh, Holy word, long preserve yes. for our walk yes. in this world. They will what resound with uh, God's own heart. Mm -hmm. Talking about the Bible. Ancient word uh, ever true. What, what else? Changing, changing me and, changing and what? You. And changing you. Notice now, back to Revelation 11. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, speaking of uh, God's people, but also primarily now speaking of uh, the word of God, the old uh, and the new, as we've been looking at in Revelation chapter 11, uh, dealing with uh, the French Revolution, uh, but also the application to that will be a worldwide, what is it? A worldwide application. Same thing that happened uh, in France is happening, uh, not will happen now, but is happening uh, in, in our days as well, and uh, will intensify. What would happen to it? Intensify. It will intensify. And uh, notice again, uh, the Bible tells us here in cha Revelation chapter 11. Uh, are you there? Amen. Verse 3, And I will give what? Uh, power unto my two witnesses, uh, and they shall prophesy a thousand uh, two hundred and threescore days, uh, clothed uh, in uh, sackcloth. Uh, we looked at this before. These are the two olive trees uh, and the two candlesticks. Uh, what happened to them? They are standing before the God of earth. And if any man, what happened? Will hurt them. Fire proceedeth out of their mouth. And we also looked at that by way of review. We saw that the fire that came out of their mouth is what? It's the word of God that comes out like fire and devoureth uh, their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, uh, he must in this manner be killed. These have uh, power to shut heaven uh, that it rate not uh, in the days uh, of their prophecy. That reminds us again uh, by way of review, that reminds us of uh, the prophet Elijah there on uh, Mount uh, Carmel. But even before that, when uh, he said to King Ahab, uh, it will not rain for the space of three and a half years. And there was a famine in the land. And that famine was symbolic of the word of God. A famine not just for food, not just for water, but a famine for the, the word of God. And the Bible goes on to say in verse 7. Skip on down to verse 7. And when they shall finish their, what's the word there? Testimony. The testimony. What does the word testimony again mean? Witness, but there is also something else. There is also another word there. We have a testimony. It means a witness, but there's another word that follows. You know which word is that? A martyr. That's the other word that notice on the screen there. It says uh, martyrs. That's the, the word uh, witness there. That's also the same word uh, testimony there. It means... Uh, Witness, as I mentioned, uh, and uh, record, uh, that's what it also means. So the same word there, but you could see the context there. You saw that there are two olive trees, right? Mm -hmm. Which are the 
Old and the New Testament. And they were prophesying in sackcloth, meaning under severe persecution. And it says that in verse 7 again, and when they shall finish their testimony, meaning speaking, preaching the word of God, but the word also means, means what again? It means a witness. And then a witness means what? martyrs when jesus says to the disciples in matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20 which is the gospel commission who remember this go into all the world and do what teach, teach all nations and do what baptize. and baptize them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and then in the book of acts Chapter 1, same similar commission there. The Bible tells us that Jesus says, You will be my witnesses in Judea and to the uttermost part of the world. The word witness there is the same word there for martyr. So Jesus was sending the disciples to a hostile environment to bear a testimony, to bear the crucified Savior. That's what uh, this was referring to. Again, uh, going back to John on uh, the island of Patmos. What did John say? What was the reason why he was there? Because of the testimony that he, he bore. And uh, it means uh, he was a witness uh, and he was a martyr for Jesus Christ. Uh, at least they tried mm -hmm. to kill him, uh, but history tells us uh, God spared his life. So... How many of us want to be a martyr? No. To be a martyr. How many of us want to be a martyr? No. I see a few hands. Mm -hmm. You know, it also means a, a, a witness. Yes. That, that's, what, that's what the word means. It's basically you die for what you believe. Very good. You die for what you believe. Isn't that what the Muslims, many of them do, brothers and sisters? They will die for what they believe. They would die even though what they believe will not get them anywhere. But they will die for it. That's how zealous we should be. I'm not saying you should be like the Muslim going out there and do what they're doing. I'm saying we should be very zealous for the word of God. Be ready to be martyred for the word of God. Be ready to be killed for the word of God. But how often... You ask the question, just same way I just ask it. Uh, how many of you wants to be a martyr? Yeah, I see a few hands uh, going up and some uh, stayed down and some didn't know what to, what to say or what to do. If I had said, how many of you wants to be a witness for Jesus? I'm sure all hands will go up, but not realizing that you're saying that I want to be a martyr for Jesus. <laughs> you don't realize what you're saying because that's exactly what the word means. Amen? And uh, again, uh, so these uh, individuals there, these men uh, and women uh, and uh, young uh, people as well, they were not afraid uh, to be martyrs uh, for, for Jesus Christ. Uh, they were not afraid to be witnesses uh, for Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, go now to Revelation chapter 20. Which book are you going to? Revelation, Revelation chapter 20. Remember again, uh, the Apostle John says uh, he was uh, there because of the testimony that he bore. And in Revelation chapter 20, notice now, we are looking at uh, what it really means uh, to be uh, a witness uh, for Jesus Christ. Uh, we already saw the definition there. We saw what it says in Revelation 11. Uh, that's exactly what it means. Uh, th those individuals who went through that period of time there that, that is described in Revelation 11, uh, the 1,260 years, uh, they were really witnesses for Jesus. They were really martyrs for Jesus. Revelation 20 tells us uh, in uh, verse uh, 4. Notice now, it says, uh, are you there? Mm -hmm. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon uh, them, uh, and what is it? Uh, and judgment uh, was given uh, unto them. Uh, and I saw the souls uh, of them uh, that were beheaded uh, for the witness uh, of uh, Jesus, uh, Notice now, that, that were beheaded for the what? What's the word? Witness, Witness uh, Jesus. of uh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you look at the context there. They were beheaded uh, for the 
witness. It's like a say, saying something and repeat it. Amen? You see that? It's like you, the Bible would say it and then repeat it. That's repeat and enlarge. Amen? Again, it says, uh, headed for the witness of Jesus and for the word. What is it? For the word of God, and which had not worshipped, the notice with me now, the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So notice now, those of us living in these last days, many of us, I should say, are going to be martyrs. But notice what God is promising here. We're going to live with him a thousand years. Is that it? No. No. Where, which, which, what period of time is this referring to here? It's talking about uh, not, well, a thousand years. That's a millennium. But it's talking about doing that time. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, when Jesus comes, amen, mm -hmm. when Jesus comes a second time, uh, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, and many other passages, even uh, Revelation chapter 1 that we just looked at, uh, where it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and uh, every eye shall see him. But again, uh, according to what the Bible says, when Jesus comes the second time, that is the beginning uh, of that 1,000 years. And we will be up there with him. Uh, remember, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says, uh, we will be cut up in the air. Amen. I, what a day that would be, brothers and sisters. Amen. I can't wait for that day. I can't wait for that day. But uh, we, must, we must face uh, what's uh, coming upon us. We must uh, pass this test. We must go through this time. We must have uh, a Patmos, so to speak, experience. Yes. Like the, the Apostle John. So during that time, uh, the saints will be up there with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So right now, what I would like you to focus a little bit is uh, what will it be like uh, doing that thousand years uh, in heaven uh, with Jesus Christ think about this before I scare you further <laughs> think about this for a moment a thousand years in paradise with our loving uh, Savior wow I can't wait for this amen? amen I cannot wait for this now a thousand years is a long time isn't it it's a long time. I'm not that old, but I feel like I've been uh, in this earth for forever now. <laughs> Amen? But imagine a thousand years for Jesus. Now, let's come back down to earth now, to reality. Amen? Amen. <laughs> That's coming. That is, that is a promise. Yes. Jesus promised that. Amen? We believe in His promises. Amen? Yes. And uh, the Bible tells me that God does not lie. No. But mm -hmm. the reality that we are facing right now is that, uh, as the Apostle John says here in verse 4 of this chapter there, many were what? Again, uh, let's go back. Beheaded. He says many were beheaded. Beheaded for what reason? The for the witness of uh, Jesus. Do you love uh, Jesus, brothers and sisters? Oh, yes. Do you want to be a witness for Jesus? Yes. Well, the time uh, is coming uh, and it is rapidly coming upon us where we're going to find out for sure if we really desire to spend a thousand years in glory with, uh, with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking now? Yes. Oh, brothers and sisters. Are we ready for this? Should we, should we be ready for this? Yes. Should we be ready for it? Yes. When Jesus came to the apostles, or when he came, he called out several individuals. And we saw some examples in the book of uh, Luke, chapter 4 and also chapter 5. You don't need to turn there. In, cha in chapter 5, rather, Luke chapter 5, uh, he called uh, Ma Matthew. He also called uh, Simon. And what did he say to those individuals? Remember what he said to them? He said, follow me. Yes. He said to Peter, I will make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. And what did they do? They forsook all, the Bible says. They forsook all. They dropped down everything. Their profession, 
to follow Jesus. They had the families. They didn't ask any question. I'm still amazed, brothers and sisters, when I read the passages like this. I'm still amazed when I read the account of Matthew and the account of Peter. The way the Lord Jesus came to them and says, follow me. Jesus did not promise at that moment anything. He didn't say, if you follow me, then you will have this. But the Bible tells me that uh, they drop everything and follow Jesus. You know what that do for us? If we were to come to, to have that kind of mindset, that kind of attitude, we'll have peace of mind. We will be free as a bird. Amen? Amen. We'll have peace of mind so we can withstand everything. If we were to drop down everything and follow Jesus, by that I'm talking about in our minds. I'm not talking about physical things now, but although that's an application there as well. But in our mind, if we can purpose, as Daniel says, in, the, in our mind, if I can purpose in my mind, no matter what happened, I am not going to let anything stand in the way of me following Jesus. I will have complete peace of mind. The Bible says that will keep him in perfect peace. Whose eyes is what? Stayed on thee. Not on anything else. I want that kind of peace, don't you? The apostle John had that perfect peace. Even on the island of Patmos. He was exiled there. He didn't have any companionship there. He was all by himself, but he had a perfect peace. Yes. The best place to be is where God is, right? Amen. Was God there on the island of Patmos with the Apostle John? Yes. We just read that. God sent an angel, and I believe that was the angel Gabriel there. Mm -hmm. God sent an angel to give John more <laughs> work to do, and he had to pin down the vision there while on the island of Patmos. John probably thought his work was over. But no, brothers and sisters, even at that old age, even at that place, God still had a work for John to do. Does God have a work for us to do? Yes. God wants all of us uh, to forsook all and to follow him and to work for him. We're living uh, in, uh, in a time when uh, we have to show what kind of testimony that we are bearing. Again, uh, the Bible tells me that uh, there will be martyrs. Go with me now to uh, the book of 1 uh, Peter. Which book are you going to? 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Uh, we are, it's, the word there means uh, more than a witness. Uh, we're going to 1 Peter. Which book are you going to? 1 Peter, Peter chapter 5. Uh, so the word, one more time, testimony there, means more than just uh, Witness, uh, it also means, uh, what again? Uh, it means a uh, martyr. First Peter chapter 5, uh, and the Bible says, uh, beginning in verse 1, are you there? And the Bible says, uh, the elders uh, which are among you, aduat, uh, I exhort, uh, who am also an elder and a what? Uh, what's the word? A witness uh, of the, notice now the definition there, a witness of what? Of the sufferings of Christ uh, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. revealed. So first we must be a witness of what? Of the sufferings of Christ. Before we could be, as Peter says here, a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. You know what word comes to mind? Hang on. Those words come to mind. Hang on. Yes, uh, brothers and what's that? With both, hands. With both hands. Amen. Hang on. We must first be partakers uh, of his suffering. That's being a witness. That's what the word again means. We must first be partakers of uh, Christ's sufferings before we can be, be what, as Peter says here, be a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. And the Bible tells me that the glory that shall be revealed, we can never compare it uh, with the suffering Amen. that we may experience here. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And uh, notice again uh, another passage. Uh, going back now to Revelation uh, chapter 1. Which book are you going to? Revelation 1. Revelation chapter 1. And uh, 
as Peter just said there, that we must be partakers of her Christ's suffering. And a Christ, as Revelation chapter 1 tells us here, he is uh, the ultimate uh, witness or the true witness uh, or the true ma martyr. Remember, the Bible says uh, Christ uh, was the lamb uh, that was slain uh, from where? From the foundation of the world. Which book are we going to? Revelation chapter 1. Uh, and uh, notice now, speaking of Christ, uh, and the Bible says uh, in uh, verse uh, 5. Uh, all right, verse 5. Uh, and the Bible says uh, in verse 5 of Revelation chapter 1, uh, and from Jesus uh, Christ, who is what? Faithful. The faithful, what is it? Witness. Again, uh, context. Uh, as we just looked at so far, so it says here, Jesus is the faithful witness. Uh, so what else can you put there? What else can you add there? The faithful martyr. It says, uh, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness uh, and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him uh, that, uh, notice with me now, that loved us uh, and washed us uh, from uh, our sins. Uh, how did he do this? In his, In his blood. So the same thing the apostle Peter just said there, that uh, we must first be partakers of his suffering uh, before we can be partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. When will that glory be revealed unto us? The same Jesus, the Bible tells us, uh, which was uh, taken up from you, shall so come uh, in like manner as you have seen him go. That's the same Jesus. That's the glory that shall be revealed. The same way we are experiencing uh, his suffering right now, we will also be partakers of his, uh, of his glory. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Amen. What a day that will be. Again, uh, the word martyrs mean what again? Uh? Witness. Witness. Uh, go now with me to Revelation. Uh, we looking at Revelation chapter 3 this time. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, speaking uh, of the church, uh, to the church uh, of uh, Laodicea. The Bible says, uh, speak, this church there represents you and I in these last days. The last church there. It says, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, uh, right. These things saith the who, the amen, the faithful and uh, true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Who is again uh, that true witness there? That is uh, Jesus Christ. He is the amen. He is the alpha and uh, the omega. The beginning of what again it says? Uh, of the creation of God. So Jesus is the true witness. He is the true martyr. He is the one uh, who bear the sins uh, of all those who are going to be partaker of uh, this uh, glory that the Bible has uh, promised us here. So again, uh, go back now to chapter 2 now of the book of Revelation. Which book? Revelation, Revelation chapter 2. Notice now. Are you there? Amen. And the Bible says, uh, beginning uh, in uh, verse uh, 8, uh, Revelation chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. Uh, and unto the angel of the church uh, in uh, Smyrna, right? Uh, These things uh, saith uh, the first uh, and the last, uh, which was uh, dead uh, and is uh, alive. Uh, who will remember what Smyrna means? It's a sweet smelling oh, odor, savor, or odor, myrrh. Notice now, Jesus is talking to this church there. And uh, myrrh in the Bible represents what? Remember, the Bible says to present our bodies as a sweet-smelling uh, savor unto God. Just like uh, Jesus' sacrifice came up to God as a sweet-smelling uh, savor. Amen? Amen? Notice now, God is talking to his people there and is uh, telling the, his people to do likewise. Not be afraid to stand up for truth. Not be afraid to become martyrs for him. One more time. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna, write these things, saith uh, the first uh, and uh, the last uh, which was dead and is alive. Notice now, was uh, dead. Dead uh, how? Dead to sin, but is alive. In order for you and I to be dead to sin, I must die. Isn't that uh, the logic here? So that's the kind of death, that's the kind of martyr God wants us to be. Dead to sin. That's what it means when uh, I agree to join uh, the army of God. When I agree to be a follower of Jesus Christ. When I agree to be a witness for Jesus Christ. I am uh, in agreement and I am uh, agreeing to be dead to sin. That's what it means. 
That's what the witness there means. To be a martyr, not just martyr from the physical oppression, not just martyr from uh, what men might do unto me, but a martyr to sin, dead to sin. That's what the Bible just told us about Jesus. He says uh, he suffered. Why did he suffer? He suffered for our sins, but what else? Why did he suffer? Because he would not violate the word of God. That's what it also means to be a martyr. That means you're willing to be crucified than to sin against God. No. You get that? Notice now. It says, I know that works. Verse 9 says, And tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things. What's the word? Fear none. Of those things which thou shalt suffer, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into, where? Prison. Prison. That ye may be, notice the word there, tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. And notice now, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a what? A crown of life. Notice now, God will allow his people to be tried. Why? Because God wants us to die to sin. God wants us uh, to be a martyr to sin. And uh, to come up uh, a born new person uh, in Christ Jesus. Wasn't that the reason why John found himself on the island of Patmos? Mm -hmm. When they tried to boil John, as uh, history tells us, with uh, hot oil, was he... A, uh, were they able to kill him? No. What was the reason why? God not only spared his life, but he was guiltless, brothers and sisters. He was guiltless. We must come to a point, I must come to a point, uh, where just like John, just like the three Hebrew boys, that the fire did not have no power, the Bible says, in, in them. I must come to a point where I know that uh, in my mind, I know that for sure, we know that for sure, that uh, if ever God were to allow something like that to happen to us, uh, that there won't be any spot, any wrinkles, anything. And it begins here. This is where the battle is taking place, the battle for the mind. And let's uh, keep on down to verse 12, another church there. And to the angel of what? Of the church in uh, Pergamos, right? These things saith he, which uh, hath uh, the sharp sword uh, with uh, two edges. Uh, what are these things there? The sharp sword with two edges. The word of God. The word of God. Uh, amen. Uh, I know thy works, uh, and where thou dwellest, uh, even uh, where Satan's seat is, uh, and uh, thou holdest fast my name, uh, and uh, hast not denied my faith, uh, even in those days uh, where in uh, Antipas uh, was, uh, what's the word there or words there? Faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Uh, does that sound like uh, Babylon? Yes. yes, brothers and sisters. Are we living in the same time again? Mm -hmm. Oh, brothers and sisters, we must be willing to be crucified. This world belongs to the enemy. Bible tells us that uh, Satan... Uh, is bringing so many accusations against God's people, against uh, those, uh, not, not against uh, the world now. Those accusations the enemy are raising, uh, they, they're not so much against those that are in the world, those he already has in his uh, box somewhere. Those accusations are coming against those, those of us uh, who profess to believe in Jesus Christ. We must be spotless in these last days. We must be blameless. We must be a martyr. Again, I'm not so much referring to physical oppressions there. I'm referring to dead to sin, as the Bible tells us here. Amen? Notice with me now. Go, go, go to the book of uh, Zechariah with me. Which book are we going to? Zechariah. We're going to the book of uh, Zechariah, chapter 3. This is where we're heading. Zechariah chapter 3, 
And uh, notice with me now. Again, uh, the Bible says uh, we must be how? Spotless uh, in these last days. So that whatever accusation the enemy may, may bring uh, uh, to God against us, uh, that uh, we will be blameless. Uh, notice with me now in Zechariah chapter, chapter 3. And uh, notice now in uh, verse 1. Are you there? Amen. And the Bible says, And he showed me, who? Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan, who was there? Satan, Satan standing at his right hand to do what? Resist. To resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this, notice with me now, the question, is not this a brand uh, plucked, uh, wait, where? Out of the where? Fire. Out of the fire. Who's the this there? That the Bible is referring to. Joshua. Th th this high priest there. Mm -hmm. So this uh, high priest there, this individual there, was uh, plucked out of the fire. Why? Why out of the fire? What does the fire do? It purifies us, brothers and sisters. It purifies us. Uh, Notice now, it goes on to say, And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the water, the filthy garments from him. Remember, Satan was the one bringing accusations there against Joshua. But God had already allowed Joshua to go through the fire. But Satan still wants to label Joshua with this uh, filthy garment. He is a, a sinner. He belongs to me. This is the accusation that Satan is constantly bringing to God against you and I. We must be martyrs in these last days. We must go through the fire. So that uh, God can say to Satan, so that God can say to the angel there, as he says uh, to the angel, he says... Uh, and the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not this a brand pluck out of the fire? Can God say this about me? Can God say this about you? That you are a branch plucked from the fire. That God recognizes you. That he recognizes me. That I'm willing to forsake all. That I'm willing to forsake sin. That I'm willing to follow him all the way. All the way my Savior leads me. What if I to what? Beside. To ask beside. Can we? Doubt his what? Tender, mercy. Tender mercies. But we must we respond. Amen? Can God say this about me? What a privilege Joshua had here, brothers and sisters. That Christ, that God was pleading his case there. Christ says, is not this, that what, uh, verse uh, 2, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with what, filthy garment, and stood before the angel. And uh, he answered and spake uh, unto those uh, that stood before him, uh, saying, do what? Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have done what? I have caused uh, thine, uh, notice now, iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of a raiment. Or the word raiment there means clothing. Yes. Who's the change of raiment is that? Christ is a uh, raiment. Christ's perfect uh, Life of uh, righteousness. Uh, can God plead your case? I want Jesus to plead my case. Mm -hmm. If I'm not willing to be crucified, if I'm not willing to be a martyr, God cannot plead my case. Mm -hmm. I want an advocate uh, like this one, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. Don't you want an advocate like, like, like this one? Oh, yes. So therefore, we must be witnesses. Mm -hmm. Oh, brothers and sisters, I wish I could hear God saying this about me. When the, the enemy is bringing uh, his constant accusation, it, am I a sinner? Yes or no? Are we sinners? Yes, yes. or no? Yes. But uh, have we accepted uh, Jesus Christ, his blood shed on the cross for you and I? Yes. 
if we have accepted it, then we are witnesses. Then uh, if we are witnesses, we are what? Martyrs. Martyrs. Remember the apostle John uh, bore a testimony. And he was called an apostle because he was there. That's what the apostle means. The apostles are those uh, who were there witnessing uh, the, uh, the crucified Christ or even live with him at the same time. So John uh, bore wit record of what he saw. As a result, uh, he was a witness, a martyr for Jesus Christ. He suffered for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Likewise, uh, Joshua there. Jesus was uh, pleading his case. Uh, our case, uh, back to Revelation 11. Uh, which book are we going to? Revelation 11. Our case uh, is, being, uh, is pre being presented in heaven right now. Because we are in the uh, anti-typical day of what? And I told me the same chapter there. Chapter 11 of the, the book of uh, Revelation. Chapter 11 uh, tells us here in uh, the last verse there. Notice what it says. And the what? And the temple of God was what? Was open in heaven. And there was seen in his temple. The what? The ark of his testament. The word testament there, it's a testimony. It also means witness. That's what the word there also means. It says, And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and a great hell. Notice now. What does this remind you of? Which story? Go with me now to the book of Exodus. Keep in mind those words there. Which words I'm referring to? It says uh, that uh, the temple of God was open. By the way, when uh, the apostle says uh, the temple of God was open uh, and he, in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of, the, of his testament, which apartment we're looking at here? The most holy place. But he speaks of judgment. Where is judgment coming from? The most holy place. What, what was there? The ark of the testament or the testimony. Notice now. And then it says there was great hell. Like uh, it described in Exodus chapter 20. Which book are we going to? In Exodus chapter 20, this is the account uh, after God has given uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, and, uh, but notice how the Bible describes it. Uh, the Bible says, uh, while God was speaking uh, the Ten Commandments, uh, the testimonies, amen, the witnesses, uh, in the hearing uh, of the people, in verse 18, uh, after God has finished uh, speaking the, the con Ten Commandments, in their hearing, uh, the Bible says, uh, and all the people saw the water. The thunderings and the water and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Similar words that we just saw in Revelation chapter 11 verse 19. The temple of God was open and there was seen water. The ark of his testimony or testament. What was inside of the ark? The law of God. When God spoke the law, what, what happened? There was a lightning trembling. Same thing when the testimony opened. Or the uh, temple of God was opened. And it goes on to say, And they said, verse 19, unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Notice with me now. Fear not, for God is come, what's the words? To prove you. What does the word prove there mean? To test you. Why? And that his fear may be before your faces. That what, uh, what is the word? Or oh, what are the words? That ye sin not. So what was the reason why? That God uh, displayed himself like that as he was speaking uh, the Ten Commandments in the hearing of the people. So that the fear of God could come upon them that they would sin not. Yes. That they would uh, crucify the flesh. Sin. What's that? Renounce sin. sin. Amen. And uh, the Bible says, And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near mm -hmm. unto the thick darkness where God was. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, are we living uh, in a similar time? So when God spoke the, the Ten Commandments, it was a miniature picture Based on the description there of what took place on Mount Sinai, the thunderings, the lightnings, and all of these things that brought fear upon the people, that was a miniature picture 
of uh, the day of atonement, uh, of the judgment that's coming. Uh, are we living in those days, brothers and sisters? Yes. Then what do we need? Back to Zechariah again. Uh, we need an advocate mm -hmm. that would plead uh, for my case and your case. Uh, and the time uh, for us to find this advocate, to surrender to this adv advocate, I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ here, the time is now. Yes to follow him, to surrender all to him, so he can plead my case now, so he can plead your case now, so that uh, it will not be too late. Uh, judgment is coming. Uh, but before that, uh, as uh, the Bible says, you see the transition there from God's people being persecuted and to judgment, uh, to lightnings. Uh, same thing is about to happen. There will be martyrs. Uh, notice what it says here. It says, uh, Zechariah's vision of uh, Joshua, and the angel applies with what? Peculiar force to the experience of who? Of God's people in the closing scenes of the great day of atonement. The remnant church will then be brought into what? Great trial and distress. Those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus will feel the ire of the dragon and his host. Satan will do what? Numbers the world as his subjects. He has gained control even of many professing Christians. But here is a what? A little company who are resisting his supremacy. Where do we find this little company? Again, we're looking at Revelation again. Turn back to Revelation chapter 12. Well, you should know this. Verse 17, we've been quoting this every now and then. What does it say there? And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have what? The testimony of Jesus Christ. The testimony of, what does the test, word testimony again mean? The witness or martyrs of Jesus Christ. Isn't that what the Bible and Spirit of Prophecy telling us it's coming? Notice now. So, in the near future, he will stir up uh, the wicked powers of what? Earth. Of earth uh, to destroy the people of God. Men will be required uh, to do what? Right. To render obedience to human edicts in violation uh, of the divine law. That's from uh, Prophets and Kings, uh, page 587. Uh, that tells me that the word of God uh, will come under attack. Uh, and uh, those that try to bear the testimony, the word of God, will suffer persecution. Now, notice what this says here. It says from Christian News, Beauty and the Beast, director says, I wish I was like a Lord of the Wings, star who weeps, what is it? Leviticus 18.22, out of hotel Bibles. What does Leviticus 18.22 say, notice with me now, go to Leviticus. So what is being under attack here? The law of God, the testimony, remember the testimony was placed inside of the ark. Amen? And the testimony there also means a witness. The law of God means witness. Notice now, where are we going to? Leviticus 18.22. Le Leviticus 18. 22. And uh, notice now, the Bible says, uh, Thou shalt not what? Lie, Lie with uh, mankind. And uh, as uh, with uh, womankind, it is what? It is an uh, abomination. That is also part of uh, the Ten Commandments, brothers and sisters. The commandments that tells us, uh, Thou shalt not commit uh, adultery, Amen. covers uh, all of that. But this man says uh, that he wish. Uh, that he was like a Lord of the Rings, a star who weeps Leviticus 18, 22 out of hotel Bibles. That's exactly what happened during the French Revolution. As we've been looking at in Revelation chapter 11, they made war against the Bible and they uphold the goddess of a reason and men made law above the laws of God. So where are we heading? We are seeing a movement now that, 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 that is coming upon us in so many ways, whether if it's uh, this homosexual agenda, climate change agenda, whatever you want to call it, uh, there is a movement, there is a push right now to go uh, against uh, 
what a death saith the Lord to uphold man's main law. Notice this article here. It says, USA Today, right ring French group building what? Multimedia Empire near Detroit. Church, what is it? Church militant, a French group claiming to be Catholic. Its leader, Michael Voris, has uh, compared, uh, what is it? Trump. Trump. With who? Constantine. With uh, Constantine, the Roman emperor, whom he says uh, was not a moral man, but a power-hungry egomania, but who saw, notice with me now, it uh, desirable to end uh, the persecution of uh, Christians. He was a human vessel. Who was a human vessel? Constantine. Constantine. So notice now he's comparing uh, Trump with Constantine. Mm -hmm. He says uh, that uh, Constantine was uh, the same way Trump is, same uh, mentality or same characteristic, uh, was not a moral person, uh, but wanted to free the Christians, uh, but there was an agenda be behind this. Uh, as we covered before, it says uh, he was a human vessel who does what? Did what? Elevated uh, Catholicism uh, to the state religion. That's what the Constantine did. And that is exactly right. Because Constantine paved the way for Catholicism. We saw that when he tried to legislate Sunday. Isn't that the same thing, the same push that's happening? Notice what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. Great Controversy 53. It says on March 7th, 331, Sunday, the day of the sun, was uh, declared uh, an official day of rest uh, on which uh, markets uh, were banned uh, and public offices uh, were closed. Uh, by who? By Emperor Constantine. In the early part of uh, the 4th century, the Emperor Constantine uh, issued uh, a decree making, uh, what is it, uh, Sunday a public festival throughout the Roman Empire. Is that biblical? Is that part of the testimony? No. That is a man-made law. They are ripping pages, or they have ripped pages out of the Bible. A similar attempt is taking place. Notice now, the day of the sun was reverenced by his pagan subjects and was honored by Christians. It was the emperor's policy to unite the conflicting interests of hedonism and Christianity. He was urged to do this by who? Who urged him to do that? The bishops of the church who, inspired by ambition and thirst for power, perceive that if the same day was observed by both Christians and hidden, it would promote the nominal acceptance of Christianity by pagans and thus do what? Advance the power and glory of the church. Isn't that what this article just tells us here? It says uh, that he was a human vessel who elevated Catholicism to the state religion. And they said they are a church of militant. Militant to do what? To elevate uh, Catholicism. So they are going back to history now. And they are saying that uh, we see uh, our time again. The same way Constantine was used by the church uh, to elevate uh, Catholicism. And uh, we saw that's exactly what happened not long after this. So th this group, this Catholic group, is saying this is the same era again, uh, brothers and sisters. So what is coming? Going to be martyrs. Notice now. This is how this thing uh, is, be is being pushed. Martyrs says, uh, this is from uh, Washington Examiner, climate change is a what? is a national security threat. What is behind climate change? It's a Sunday law. But on the surface, Trump, seem, it seems like he's not for climate change. Mm -hmm. But brothers and sisters, that, that is part of the game. There has to be a thesis and an antithesis. There, it has to be, there has to be two parties. That seems like they're fighting it, but uh, the end result will be the same. What just happened uh, recently with the Obamacare that they tried to, pa that they tried to uh, eliminate? Mm -hmm. yeah. What just happened? Not, it, didn't it didn't pass. How come, brothers and sisters? They control the White House, speaking of Republican. They control uh, the Senate. Uh, 
they controlled the House, but yet they couldn't get the uh, Trump care to pass no. and uh, cancel or delete the Obamacare? No. No. It's part of the game, brothers and sisters, because <laughs> Obamacare was, uh, uh, they came up with it uh, to enforce uh, Sunday law. It's part of the Sunday law. It's, it's a, you remember what Hitler did? Mm -hmm. Hitler had, there was a Hitler care too. Did you, did you know about this? There was a Hitler care. The same thing that Obamacare did. Where you are you being taxed if you don't uh, have health care? Mm -hmm. Hitler did the same thing. What is coming, brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. the, it's the same party. So now, it seems like that uh, according to what it says here, in a clash with President Trump's environmental team, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis has declared that climate change is a threat to national security. But notice what it says here. It's a clash with uh, President Trump's environmental team. The so-called environmental team are against climate change. They say it's a hoax. Brothers and sisters, they're just playing you in between. What did Donald Trump promise? When, in regard to Obamacare, on day one, he says, I'll get rid of Obamacare. But how, how long has it been? He uh, took office uh, January 20th. It's been what now? A month and uh, several days later now, almost two months. Two months. Two months. Two months? Yeah, two months. Yeah, January, February, that's right, two months. What happened to Obamacare? It's, it's the law of the land. It's the law. As a matter of fact, that's what Paul Ryan says. Yes. Right? After it, they fell to pass the Trump care and delete Obamacare, Paul Ryan, the, the Speaker of the House, who is a Republican, says uh, that, well, Obamacare is the no. law of the land. <laughs> they were just playing you and I in between, brothers and sisters. Same thing with climate change. This thing uh, is going in full, full speed ahead. Notice what this says here. It says, uh, from the Independent, uh, March uh, 23rd, uh, 2017, what does it say there? Climate change helped cause a Brexit, says uh, Al Gore. You remember Brexit? Mm -hmm. You remember Brexit? That's uh, the UK that came out of the what again? Uh, the European uh, mm -hmm. the Union. And uh, Al Gore says climate change caused that. They're blaming climate change for everything. Mm -hmm. It says former vice president echoes a warning from U.S. military that global warming is uh, causing uh, dangerous political instability. Another one here. From independent, uh, Earth's worst ever mass extension of life holds, uh, what's the word there? Apocalyptic warning uh, about climate change. Uh, say scientists. Uh, what does that word that mean there? That's the book of Revelation they're talking about. That's the book of Revelation. It says uh, researchers uh, studying uh, the largest uh, ever mass extension in Earth history claim to have, uh, notice with me now, found evidence that uh, it was caused by what? Runaway global warming uh, and that the apocalyptic events of 250 million years ago could happen uh, again uh, unless uh, we do something about it right away. Another one here. It says, from USA Today, Earth Hour 2017, there's never been a more critical moment in the fight. The fight of what? The fight on climate change. Earth Hour is the opportunity to send a message that we remain steadfast in delivering on the goals of the Paris Agreement. What was the goal of the Paris Ag Agreement? To take action on climate change. To bring down, uh, what is it? Yeah, that's right. Where are we, brothers and sisters? Now, these laws, whatever they came up with at the Paris ag Agreement, during the Paris Agreement there in France back in 2015, now they're saying uh, more than ever we need to take action because uh, according to the so-called scientists, uh, the, same those, the same scientists, by the way, just met with the Pope, and now they are crying out and saying, now we must do something right away. Notice now, a call for what? Ecological conversion. What does the word conversion mean? A U-turn, brothers and sisters. A U-turn. 
That's what's behind uh, climate change. Now, every single one of us uh, must be converted, must repent. It says, a summary of Pope Francis' plea for humanity as expressed in his new encyclical, Laudato Si. So it is a call to what? To repent. It's a call to, it's a conversion call. So it is called ecological conversion. This is the movement that's uh, spreading rapidly. Notice what this next article says here. It says, uh, Myanmar, Cardinal calls for urgent, what, what, what are the words again? Ecological conversion. This is uh, ecological terrorism. What is ecological terrorism? The powerful of this world decide who should live or die. Economic and uh, ecological terrorists are, what is it? Unleashed. Unleashed against the poor. There is a need for an uh, integrated approach in the fight against uh, poverty to protect uh, nature and declare ecological crisis is a moral crisis. It is an uh, existential crisis. Nature is uh, mutilated for economic uh, greed. Notice now. D do you see how serious this is? They're saying uh, that uh, nature is being used for economic greed. They say we must stop all of these things. Even now mining, they're saying that we must stop mining. We must stop mining, brothers and sisters, because uh, we are deteriorating, uh, deteriorating uh, the planet. But uh, they're calling for more than that. They're calling for a day of rest. They said it's a sin. It goes on to say, humanity has broken the pact with nature, and this is why it is a profoundly moral issue and an ecological uh, original uh, Oh, you see how serious this is? So if it is a, a moral uh, sin, uh, what do we need? We need a moral leader. It says, uh, that needs uh, an uh, ecological conversion uh, and ecological evangelization. That's a Sunday law there. That's a push for Sunday law. It says, repent. God's creation is in danger. Change your life to save the planet. So we must repent now. Change your life to save the planet. What if, brothers and sisters, I refuse to go along with this so-called uh, ecological conversion? What if I refuse to go along with this? What is coming? What must we do then? Persecution is coming. We need to fast and pray. But now, question for you now. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to stand fast or are you going to cave in? Because uh, the Seventh-day Adventist church, notice now, is already caving in. It says there, do Adventists have a beef with Pope Francis on the issue of climate change? Thoughtful Adventists won't have a beef uh, with Pope Francis. Notice now, thoughtful Adventists, the smart ones, won't have a beef with Pope Francis. We are with Pope Francis, you know, the well-educated one, the thoughtful ones. You know, we are the stupid ones who are standing against uh, climate change. But the thoughtful one don't have a beef with Pope Francis. And uh, it gets even worse than that. Notice now. It says here, Adventist leader in Australia call for what? Compassion in foreign policy. Notice where this is going. March 16, 2017, leaders of the Adventist church in Australia have joined, uh, notice now, 11 other Australian churches, 11 other Australian churches. churches. Who are they? Endorsed by signatories from the Adventist, Anglican, Apostolic, Baptist, Catholic, Chinese, Methodist, Churches of Christ, Congregational, Lutheran, Pentecostal, Salvation Army. Salvation Army, by the way, they made it very plain and very clear. The only solution to climate change uh, is Sunday law. They said this very clearly. But the Seventh-day Adventist Church have joined together with uh, these uh, other denominations, uh, and also it says uh, United Churches, uh, after, notice with me now, I would lining a biblical theology for justice and compassion, a biblical theology. Which Bible they use for this uh, study that they put together there? 
you know, Sister White says, that's exactly what apostate Protestantism will do. They will lay aside the differences that they have with the papacy, and uh, they're going to come together on what they have in common. Isn't that the same thing the Seventh-day Adventist Church is doing there? It says, uh, the submission addresses specific issues, including uh, the scourge of, uh, what is it? Whose language is this? That's the Pope's language. It says economic exclusion and rising inequality. Whose language is this again? Not only this is uh, Pope Francis' language there, but that's a, a communism language. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the Robin Hood mentality? You, you uh, take from the rich to give to the poor? Mm -hmm. it, this is what they call income inequality what, or quality, whatever they want to call it. It says here, grave breaches of people's human and civic rights and the vulnerability of our nation and our neighbors to natural disasters and the increasing impact of what? Climate change. Climate change in particular poses an urgent and increasing threat in the region, said the document. So the Seventh-day Adventist Church signed that document. Mm -hmm. That climate change indeed poses a great threat. So then we must go along with what Pope Francis says. He says Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is the best day to keep holy, to give the planet a rest. Is that happening? Notice now another article here, this time from Adventists Today. It says a Ghanaian Adventist, who now? Conference president calls for church to take lead in protecting the water, the environment. I wonder, brothers and sisters, which one of those Jesuits whispering behind their ears? It says, uh, March 22nd, 2017, uh, it says, uh, Nyarko, frame uh, responsible, environmental, notice with me now, protection uh, as a religious duty for who? For Adventists. Uh, are you going to join this? Are you going to join this, brothers and sisters? Well, this leader there, this uh, conference president there of the Seventh-day Adventist Church tells us that it is uh, our religious duty to do something about climate change. It goes on to say, he called for members to be responsible stewards of the Lord's creation. He calls for a public campaign. Notice now, these men now have uh, become an agent for the papacy campaigning for the papacy. Remember, it is called what again? Ecological conversion. These men have been converted to the papacy's agenda. Now they are evangelizing the world. That's what it says there. He called for a public campaign. How about a public campaign declaring that Babylon is fallen and is fallen? How about a public campaign upholding the three angels' messages? But this is a public campaign for the papacy as agendas. It says, he called for a public campaign aimed at educating the public about the harm being done to the environment as well as about the serious consequences of, notice now, our actions and inactions. So therefore, we must join with the papacy. The Laudato Si Encyclical on Climate Change, point 237, when the papacy says uh, the solution uh, is uh, keeping Sunday. As a matter of fact, notice what this article says here. This is from the Colombian uh, Missionaries uh, Britain. It says, uh, a Sabbath uh, for what? For the earth uh, and the who? And the poor. The challenge of uh, Pope Francis. Notice now they call it a Sabbath uh, for the earth. Uh, which, which day is that? That's Sunday. And uh, again, uh, the Apostle John's, again, uh, going back to Revelation chapter 1. Notice now, brothers and sisters, this is what we are facing right now. The Apostle John, uh, one more time, he was uh, on uh, the island of Patmos, exiled there. And uh, he says, uh, once again, in verse 9, I, John, who also am your brother, and companion how? In tribulation. in tribulation. And in the kingdom and patience of uh, Jesus Christ. Notice what the apostle says here. 
the apostle is showing uh, the present situation uh, and, the, and our future situation or condition or what we should look for, forward to. He says, uh, and a companion and tribulation and the kingdom and patience of uh, Jesus Christ. So what was he looking forward to? Looking forward to the return of Jesus Christ. But in the meanwhile, he was going through tri tribulation. But while he was going through that, his eyes uh, was, uh, were focusing on uh, Jesus Christ. Then he says, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of uh, Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on uh, which day? Lord. On the Lord's day. Which day is the word promoting now? Sunday. Then uh, is there an island of Patmos coming for you and I? Mm -hmm. There is an island of Patmos coming for you and I. Notice again, I'm back to the article. After it says a Sabbath for the earth and the poor, the challenge of Pope Francis, notice now, Sunday, that's the Sabbath there they're referring to. The, like uh, the Jewish Sabbath is meant to be a day which heals uh, our relationship with God, uh, with uh, ourselves, uh, with others, uh, and with the world. Notice now, we live uh, in a world where people and nature are more often valued according to their economic capacity or usefulness to, to what? Humans. To humans, rather than their intrinsic. intrinsic value as God's creation. In order to be liberated from this commodification, consumerism, and utilitarianism, the Sabbath reminds us to do what? To rediscover a sense of awe and wonder. Which Sabbath is that? Sunday. It's the Sunday Sabbath. Hmm. It's this year, brothers and sisters. They're pushing for this. Yes. Remember again, uh, October 21st. Uh, I, I'm sorry, October 31st, rather. October 31st, uh, 2017. What date is that? They call it Halloween. Very good. Yeah. They call it Halloween. Uh, but uh, that's the day Martin Luther nailed those uh, 95 theses uh, on the door of Wittenberg against uh, the policies, the teachings of the papacy. What happened to Martin Luther after that? What happened to many of the reformers after that? Mm -hmm. But this year, 2015, October 31st, 2015, October 31st, 2017, not only is uh, Halloween, which by the way, was a counterfeit to cause us to forget what Luther did. If that's, what, that's, what, that's where Halloween came from. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why they celebrated it on that day, to forget uh, what Martin Luther did on that specific day. Mm -hmm. But uh, what is about to happen this year? The death uh, of uh, Protestantism. And uh, what are they pushing for now? Mm. If my people were half away, mm -hmm. if they realize the event portrayed, in the Revelation, uh, there will be a what? a reformation, and many more will believe uh, the message. Again, it says, uh, the Sabbath reminds us uh, to rediscover a sense of awe and wonder, to see the beauty in creation and also in relationships, especially with the poor and uh, marginalized. This is an attack uh, on the Word of God. They are upholding uh, their own uh, laws and tradition. Above, uh, a dust saith the Lord. Notice what's happening now, brothers and sisters. As a, a movement, as Seventh-day Adventists, what must we be doing at this time? We should be preparing the world mm -hmm. for the crisis that is coming. We should be crying out. Amen? We should be proclaiming the three angels' message like we've never done before. Mm -hmm. We should be joyful in being witnesses for Jesus. Because we are nearing home. Yes. But what is the church promoting? Not only they are, as we just saw, promoting the same agenda, climate change, but also notice now what this article says here. This is uh, from uh, Adventist Today. $170,000 donation given uh, 
to Southwestern Adventist University for what? Sports. To spread uh, the three angels' messages. Is that what it says? No. It says for sports field uh, renovation. Mm -hmm. We're living uh, in the last days, brothers and sisters. And the church uh, is, is what? Playing games. Playing games. Sports, brothers and sisters, which was, uh, by the way, invented uh, these uh, competition sports were invented, invented, uh, Sister White tells us, by Satan. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong playing uh, some games, some sports games, mm -hmm. but we're talking about competitive sports here. Mm -hmm. These uh, sports were invented by Satan, competitive sports. So the church now is raising uh, thousands of dollars or has raised thousands of dollars to do what? To rebuild or to build a, a, a sports field or to renovate. A, oh, brothers and sisters, you see where, how money is being spent, is being wasted? Yeah. And then where, where, while in the meanwhile, God cause is, is suffering for lack of uh, those who were not willing to make sacrifices. And we have some with money. And... Uh, Throwing it into sports, brothers and sisters. Mm. That is an attack uh, on uh, the word of God. Mm. They are going against uh, what the word of God says. Same thing the world is doing. Like the, this man says again, Beauty and the Beast, uh, director, says, I wish I could say I rip pages out of the Bible. And so they are, same thing Seventh-day Adventist Church is doing. Mm. Ripping pages out of the great controversy, ripping Ripping pages out of the great, uh, the, the Bible. The three angels' messages were messages that were giving us for such a time as this. Again, uh, the church is promoting uh, climate change. They are promoting uh, sports. What else do you think uh, they are promoting? Notice what this says here. It says, uh, John uh, Mark Latte, which is uh, a Seventh-day Adventist past pastor, portions of says, portion of the Bible should be rejected to accommodate the LGBTQ March 22nd, 2017. The French Revolution. It says, John Marklati, pastor of the Green Lake SDA Church in Seattle, preach a sermon titled, What to Do with Real People. Before the sermon, he interviewed the producer of the seventh gay Adventist movie to set the stage for a sermon dedicated to, to what? To acceptance of LGBTQ in the bride of Christ. Then he says, if we are going to be faithful to God, there are times when we must, notice now, push back against the ancient words. Ancient words, ever true, changing me and changing you, then he says we must push back against that to accommodate uh, licentiousness. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, who will cry out? Mm -hmm. This is an abomination. an abomination. Then it says, uh, f he says, uh, faithfulness to God does not always mean obedience uh, to his word. Faithfulness to God. So this man is telling us, uh, let's ban the word of God to accommodate licentiousness, uh, brothers and sisters. And you still want to support this, this movement. Go now to Revelation chapter 12 with me. Which book are we going to? Revelation chapter 12 we're going to. Notice now, brothers and sisters, what is about to happen to you and I? We're going to be martyred. And uh, notice with me now, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 6, uh, and the Bible says, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she have a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand, two hundred, and three score days. The time is right upon us, where we're going to have to flee. The church leaders are in deep apostasy. They are promoting the papacy's agendas, climate change agendas, they are at this time uh, pushing uh, for sports uh, and raising money to renovate uh, a stadium uh, to play sports. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are also now as telling us uh, that we should not listen to what the Bible says uh, mm. about uh, homosexuality. However, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we should uh, consider this as a 
ancient word. Don't listen to what it says there. But when I look the book of, when I read rather, when I read the book of Jude, which has only just one chapter there, when I read uh, the book of Romans, more specifically in that book of Jude, book of Jude tells us that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was set as an example for us living in these last days. What happened in Sodom and Gomorrah? What happened there? Which, by the way, we saw the spirit, the characteristics of Sodom and Gomorrah during the French Revolution. So what is coming? As the Bible says, this pure church there, this pure woman there, will have to flee to the wilderness the same way God's people in time past, during the 1,260 years, fled into the wilderness. Why? Why did they flee? Because uh, they would rather die. They would rather be a witness for Jesus. They would rather die to sin than to forsake the Lord. This is the time that's coming upon us. Uh, the dragon uh, was uh, wroth with, with the woman. Skip on down now to verse 14. And the dragon went after her. Verse 14, it says, And the woman uh, were given uh, two wings uh, of a great eagle that she might fly. Where again? Uh, into the wilderness, into uh, her place where she is uh, nourished for a time uh, and times uh, and a half a time uh, from the face uh, of the serpent. What time is that? Same period of time uh, that we just saw in Revelation chapter 11. The 1,260 years. And uh, which, by the way, this prophecy is about to be fulfilled again. The time is coming when we would have uh, to flee into the wilderness. Notice uh, with me now, turn to your Bible now, to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17, beginning in verse 1. And uh, there came uh, one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great hall that sitteth upon, uh, what is it, uh, many waters, with uh, whom uh, the kings of the earth have uh, committed, what's the word there? Fornication. The word fornication there is the same thing uh, for the thou shall not commit adultery. That includes in that. But the pastor of this church tells me here, again, uh, John uh, Mark Lottie, he, he tells us that uh, faithfulness to God does not always mean obedience to his word. Then he says uh, that, uh, that we should uh, ban a oh, portion of the Bible should be rejected to accommodate the LGBTQ. Can you believe this, brothers and sisters? And this man is still... By, by the way, this was uh, in front of an Adventist congregation. And I'm sure this man still preaching, still preaching today mm. is still allowed to preach. Mm. Where is the uh, uh, loud crowd? Mm. Where is the outcry? Where are those ministers uh, within the Seventh-day Adventist church who are always talking about the papacy, some of them, then they have no problem talking about the papacy, but they won't talk about this. They won't talk about this, brothers and sisters. Where did that, that who, whose agenda is that? It's the same thing. Rome gave us, uh, the papacy gave us uh, this uh, climate change agenda. The papacy gave us sports as entertainment to for, cause us to forget what the word of God says, to preoccupy our mind. Rome has given us licentiousness as well. That's what the Bible says, uh, that the kings of the earth uh, have committed fornication with her, and the inhabitants of the earth uh, have been made drunk uh, with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit uh, into the wilderness, uh, and I saw a woman uh, sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of name of blasphemy, having seven heads uh, and ten horns. Uh, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of water. What's the word? Abomination and filthiness of her fornication. Yes. So whose doctrine, whose teaching is the Seventh-day Adventist following that? Now, speaking of the regular line there of Seventh-day Adventists, the papacy. It says, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Greater, notice with me now, the mother of uh, harlots uh, and abomination of the earth. And I saw, notice with me now in verse 6, the woman uh, drunken 
With the whom? The, the blood of the saints. And with the blood of the? Martyrs. What does that word, that mean, that word mean again? Witness. With the witness of Jesus Christ. So you see what happened there? What happened again? And for with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wonder with a great admiration. Brothers and sisters, the time is right upon us. As a Sister White says here, notice now. She says, in the 16th century, the Reformation presenting what? An open Bible to the people. The time is right upon us. If we stand fast for the word of God, for his word, what happened then will happen to us one more time. It's, it says, had sought admission to all the countries of Europe. Some nations welcome it with gladness as a messenger of heaven. In other lands, the papacy succeeded to a great extent in preventing its entrance. That's the word of God there. And the light of the Bible knowledge with its elevating influences was almost wholly excluded. The war against the Bible carried forward for so many centuries in France culminated in the scenes of the revolution. Is there a revolution going on right now? Yes. Is there a revolution going on within the Seventh-day Adventist church against the Word of God? Yes. Now you see why they gave us the great hope? Mm. Now you see why they gave us the great hoax instead of the great controversy? Mm. Now you see what's happening, brothers and sisters. This man of sin, at the, uh, in the meanwhile, is uh, giving a, a, a blank check at this time. We were supposed to be the watchmen on the wall. Mm -hmm. But where are we now? No, brothers and sisters. We are with Babylon. In the meanwhile, what is the papacy doing? It says here from uh, the Guardian, Pope Francis asked for forgiveness for churches rolled in Rwanda genocide in which 800,000 people were slaughtered in 100 days of violence Speaking after meeting of the one then uh, president, uh, Paul uh, Kagemi, the Vatican acknowledged uh, that, notice with me now, that some Catholic priests and nuns have uh, succumbed to hatred and violence by participating in genocide. They're saying some. But who was behind the genocide, brothers and sisters? It was the Catholic Church. But uh, notice now, he apologized. What does that tell us? Do you know prophecy? Do you know what that means when we see the Pope is, is apologizing like this? Here's what Sister White says about this. The Roman Church now presents a fair front to the world, covering with what? With apologies, her record of horrible cruelties. Thank God for, for this prophet that he gave us. Amen. Exposing the Jesuits. It says, she has clothed herself in Christ-like garments, but she is unchanged. Every principle of the papacy that existed in past ages exists uh, today. The doctrines devised in the darkest uh, ages are still held. Let none uh, deceive themselves. So again, uh, one more time. If, uh, as she says here, which is true, that the papacy does not change, because what she says there is based on uh, Revelation uh, chapter 13, uh, verse uh, 1 and 2, which uh, describe the papacy as a leopard beast. And can a leopard change, change uh, its part? No. So if it is true that the papacy will not change, then what is coming? Persecution. Then what must we do? Cry aloud. But if we refuse to cry, you know, brothers and sisters, God has some replacement workers mm -hmm. who are not of this faith. They will come in. You want me to show you an example of that? Yes. Notice now. It says, uh, Italian evangelical pastor, notice now, evangelical pastor, mm -hmm. claims Pope Francis wants to dismantle Protestant Reformation. The very rock will cry out, brothers and sisters. Notice now, it says, he is, uh, that's, he, I'm quoting the Italian evangelical pastor there. He says, uh, he is the first Jesuit Pope. And remember, the Jesuit order was founded in the 16th century to fight against the spreading of the Protestant Reformation. There are some who still remember histories, brothers and yes. sisters. They are crying out. While the Seventh-day Adventist Church is bowing to the papacy, 
God has uh, some uh, rocks out there that are crying out, even with the little bit of knowledge that they have. It goes on to say, with uh, Pope Francis, the Jesuit order comes to us with a smiling face, but always carrying with him not only the tradition, but uh, also the gold of the Jesuit order to do what? To dismantle, to, de to deconstruct the Protestant Reformation and to offer a Roman Catholic alternative. This is coming from uh, an evangelical pastor. Yes. The very rock will cry out. Amen? Amen? The very rock will cry out, brothers and sisters. But to say things like that nowadays uh, is considered uh, hate speech. You are an extremist uh, to talk about the papacy that way. Notice now, it says... Vatican calls verbal attack on uh, Pope, what is it? Terrorism. terrorism. It says, uh, this too is uh, terrorism. It's terrorism to launch attacks on the church. It said, it's terrorism to stoke blind and uh, irrational rage against someone who always speaks in the name of love. Love for life and love for men. So you see how the world has been made drunk. So the papacy is always talking about love, yes. love for the poor, income inequality, and what have you. So it's terrorism now to speak of the papacy that way. <laughs> Do you see where we're heading, brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. Notice now, it says here, Europe will be adrift if it loses Christian roots. Fifth leaders won. It says, during the fifth European Catholic Orthodox Forum, 12 delegates of the Council of European Bishops uh, Conferences uh, met in Paris with 12 representatives of the Orthodox Churches Europe last month uh, to discuss uh, the theme Europe in fear of the, what is it? Threat, Threat from uh, who? Fund Fundamentalist uh, terrorism. terrorism and the value of human person uh, and religious freedom. So who are those uh, fundamentalists? Remember the word fundamentalist, what it means again? It means those who believe in the Bible and the Bible only. The reformers were called fundamentalists. Amen? Because uh, they would rather stick on a dust save the Lord. So now we see how they are associating this with terrorism. So those of us who will speak uh, against the papacy using the Bible, Revelation 13 and many other passages, uh, we are now what? We are terrorists. So now this is the label for you and I. But remember again, the dragon was wroth with who? The woman. the woman. Who's the woman? The early church. And uh, went to make war with the remnant of her seed. What are the qualifications or the characteristics of the remnant of the seed of the woman? They keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is uh, the spirit of prophecy. But also they have the faith of Jesus Christ. Which group is that in these last days, brothers and sisters? It's us living in these last days. But, again, the enemy always uses another way to come to, at God's people in an indirect way. Always use something else. Who are they using right now as a scapegoat? Notice, from Newsweek magazine, Religion in Russia... Jehovah's Witnesses declare, what's the word? Extremist. Extremist organization by Russian Justice Ministry. Jehovah Witnesses? Mm -hmm. An extremist organization? Really? Yeah, they are a sect. I'll agree with that. Extremists? This is a smoke screen, brothers and sisters. The remnant of the seed of the woman is whom they co they going, they're coming after. Notice another one here. It says, Russian court to consider ban on extremists. Jehovah Witnesses, notice now, authorities have put several of its publications publication on a list of ban extremist literature. Now, you should be thinking right now. What was the reason why the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists published the great hoax instead of the great controversy? Because it's an extremist book. You see what they're saying here about Jehovah Witnesses' uh, publication? Those things cannot really harm anybody, their publication. They're not that heavy, brothers and sisters. Yes, they have a lot of uh, errors in them. 
Um, they, they have a lot of uh, false theories in them, but there's nothing in there that's really extremist. There's nothing in there that, pick up the book with controversy. Yeah, that's an extremist book right there. Amen? Notice now, and uh, prosecutors have long cast it as an organization that destroys families, fosters hatred, and threatens lives. That is a smoke screen. They're coming after the great controversy, brothers and sisters. That is a smoke screen. Brothers and sisters, we, we are here. We either gonna choose to be witnesses, which is a martyr for Jesus. And uh, again, uh, it does not just mean uh, to suffer persecution, physical oppression, physical persecution. It means to gain victory over sin. That you would rather die than uh, to forsake Jesus. The three Hebrew boys were witnesses for Jesus. Daniel was a witness in the lines then, was a witness for Jesus. Again, the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace were witnesses for Jesus. These men were witnesses for Jesus. The early church, many of them who were brought to the, or taken to the Colosseum, and they unleashed wild animals to devour them, were witnesses for Jesus. Were true witnesses. Because Jesus says, we just read it, that uh, he's the faithful witness, the true witness in persecution. It is through trials, through persecutions, that we know if we are genuine witnesses. Because that's when we shine the most. Mm -hmm. History tells us uh, the, those Christians that they brought to the Colosseum, uh, as a result of their stand, of their faithfulness, uh, of their witnesses, many who came uh, to be entertained by, by this became uh, followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar became a follower of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. because of the witness of uh, the three Hebrew boys. Many others from Babylon as well, of the Chaldeans, surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. We are, as the Bible says, we are a theater. Mm -hmm. Paul says this. It's like a theater. Mm -hmm. People are watching. Yes. They want to know what kind of people that we are made of. Right. What kind of people we are made of. Let's go to the book of Psalm. Which book are we going to? Psalm, Psalm uh, chapter 23. Notice with me now in Psalm chapter 23. Psalm chapter 23. What kind of people are we, brothers and sisters? It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Keep in mind, the Lord is my shepherd. If the Lord is my shepherd, what does it mean? I must trust him, obey him blindly. Because he's the one who's leading. The same way the sheep will follow the shepherd wherever the shepherd leads them. And the sheep trust that shepherd. Notice now, verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths, which path? Of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, verse 4 tells us, I walk, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod, what is it? Thy rod. thy rod. And thy staff, they comfort me. In Revelation chapter 11, verse 1, who remember what it says there? And there was given unto me a reed like unto a rod. And uh, what did the, the angel say to John to do with that? Measure, Measure the temple of God. What did the, it, the Bible just said here? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The reed, like unto a rod there, is a form of comfort. Mm -hmm. But it comforts us as we walk through the shadow of the, of the, val uh, the, 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 the valley of the shadow of death. As we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So notice now. 
God will allow us to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. He's the shepherd. He's going through there, through that valley with you, with me. Remember, it begins by saying that uh, the Lord is my shepherd. That means he's leading. Mm -hmm. So where is he leading me here? Where is he leading me? Through the valley of the shadow of death. Where is that? This is our world, brothers and sisters. This is our world. He's leading us through tribulation. The apostle John says uh, that I am your brother in the tribulation. Amen? I am your brother in tribulation. Remember, it was Jesus himself who says that uh, a servant is not greater than his master. And then he says, if they persecute me, they will also persecute you. Mm -hmm. Then he says to the disciples again, that uh, in this world we will have trouble. Yes. But be in good cheer, mm -hmm. for I have overcome the world. Our master has overcome the world. He is the yes. true witness. Yes. Amen. He will guide us. He will lead us. Beside the still waters. Beside the still waters. Mm -hmm. But... First, we must go through the valley of the shadow of death. And we, to have the attitude, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. But notice now, it says it's, it's the valley of the shadow of death. It's going to seem like sometimes God is not with us. There's darkness all around us. It's going to seem like sometimes that God is not leading. Mm -hmm. We can't, it's, it's going to feel like we can't see where he's following us. Mm -hmm. But what must we do? How will we able to know which path to stay on? I hear pray. I saw somebody picked up the Bible. He will speak. His word is a lamp. Oh, you, you, got, you got it. Psalm 119, verse 105. What does it say there? Thy word, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So as we walk through this valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because it's the valley of the shadow of death. There's darkness all around us. There's going to be time. We not going to see how the Lord is leading, but we must rely on his uh, Word, that is his testimony. Yes, right. Amen? Amen? Again, Psalm 119, verse 105. Children, what does it say? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Notice what it says there on the screen. It says, in his own strength, men cannot meet the charges of the enemy. In sin-stained garments, confessing his guilt, he stands before God. But, notice now, Jesus, our what? Our, our advocate, presents an effectual plea in behalf of all who, by repentance and faith, have committing, committed the keeping of their souls to Him. That means, brothers and sisters, we must trust Him even when we cannot see where He is leading. Amen. As we're going through the valley of the shadow of death, but remember, He's there. He is there with us. But why is he allowing us to go through the valley of the shadow of death? Because he wants us to... But what? Depend on him. What else? Purify. It is in this world, brothers and sisters, we must be purified. Not when we get to heaven. This is why the psalmist says, uh, David says, I will fear no evil. God allow us to go through trials and tribulations because it is now we must be cleansed from uh, everything that defiles us and learn to trust Him. Uh, amen. Notice now, she goes on to say, He pleads their cause, and by the mighty arguments of Calvary, then quishes uh, their accuser. His perfect obedience to what? To God's law. Well, notice now, perfect obedience to God's law. But what did we just read uh, from uh, that Adventist pastor there? No, notice now. He says, faithfulness to God does not always mean uh, obedience to his word. What did uh, Sister White says here? 
His perfect obedience to God's law has given him all power in heaven and in earth, and he claims from his father mercy and reconciliation for guilty men. So it is his perfect obedience that gives him this right. So as the, that pastor tells us, we don't need to obey God perfectly. Then what right will we have, brothers and sisters? That is a deception of, of the enemy. That is a deception of the enemy. We must gain a victory over sin right here. Let's go to uh, the book of Romans. Which book? Romans. Romans chapter 3. We're going to Romans uh, chapter 3 as we're coming to a close. Romans uh, chapter 3. Are you turning there? Amen. And the Bible says uh, in uh, verse 24, being, uh, what's the word? Justified uh, freely by his grace uh, through the what? Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. How? Oh, by the way, what does the word the, the redemption mean? To buy back. How did he buy us back? His blood. With his blood. There we go. Sacrifice. It is through his uh, sacrifice that uh, we are being uh, brought back to the Father. We have been justified by faith. Now, this, this justification means that we must go now. We are free to go and break God's law. No. no, brothers and sisters. It says, whom God have set forth to be a propitiation through faith in where? In his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are, what's the word? Pass. Then it says, through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him who believeth in Jesus Christ. But notice now, the word believeth there means uh, to, to be ready. It's not just like I believe in Jesus or I, I have faith in God, but it's a faith in action to show that you are ready to be martyrs, to be crucified. Notice now, go to the book of Romans, still in Romans, chapter 8 this time. Where are we going to? Romans, Romans chapter 8. And notice now, and the Bible says, verse 28, verse 27, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things, what is it? Work together for good to them that do what? Love God. Now those words have been taken kind of lightly. All things, it says, work together for good to those that love God. If you love me, Jesus says, John 14, 15, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. So all things will work for good to those that love God, as Jesus says, and keep his commandments. Because that's, so, that's how we show love for God. That's uh, love in action, it goes on to say. To them who are the call according to his uh, purpose. Uh, go now to another book, 1 Corinthians. Which book are you going to? 1 Corinthians chapter 1 as we're coming to a close here. Notice now, verse uh, 26. It says... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. For you see your calling. What is it? Your calling, brethren. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But who are called? Those who are willing to make sacrifices. Those who are willing, as the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1, who are willing to do, to do these foolish things, to lay down their, their lives for the Master. It says, but God have chosen who? The foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God have chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh should glory in his what? presence. But, notice with me now, of him are ye in Christ? Jesus, who of God is made unto us, what? Wisdom and righteousness and what else? And sanctification and redemption. We see three things there. What are they? Righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. and redemption. So what does that mean, brothers and sisters? What does it mean? 
God wants to make us whole. That's righteousness there. Sanctification. God wants us to be set apart. Mm -hmm. And what else? Redemption. redemption. When will that happen? When will that redemption happen? <coughs> He's already redeemed us, yes. but we still here physically, right? When he, when he comes again. So again, back to Revelation as we close. Revelation uh, chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1 again as we're coming to a close. The Bible says, uh, verse 8, uh, Jesus says, I am uh, Alpha and what? Omega. Omega. The beginnings and uh, the ending, saith the Lord, which is uh, and uh, which was and which is uh, to come uh, the Almighty. But back to verse 7, uh, it says, Behold, uh, he cometh uh, with clouds. And how many eyes will see him? Every eye shall see him. And they also which pierce him. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, what is it? Amen. Amen. And come, Lord Jesus. But in the meanwhile, we must uh, hang on. Jesus, yes, is coming again. Yes, he's uh, coming to give us uh, life, uh, eternal life. Uh, but he wants us uh, to be faithful witness for him as we patiently waiting for him. As a matter of fact, this is what John says in verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and uh, what, what's the word? Patience of uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, as Revelation 14, 12 tells us, here is what? The patience, the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God uh, and the faith uh, of uh, Jesus Christ. We are living in serious time. The Lord Jesus wants to come again. But I believe one of the things that our Lord is waiting for is to see men and women, uh, young people, to be committed to serve Him. Because when this crisis hit upon us, which is about to burst upon us, we're going to need uh, the faith uh, of the apostles. Amen. Like they said in the book of Acts, uh, Behold, uh, they are threatening. But uh, what they were asking for was that, uh, that God will give them boldness, the grace, uh, the power to stand for Him and to continue to suffer for His cause. And as a result, brothers and sisters, many of them were, were cleansed from their leprosy of sins because they were willing to go through the trials, to the tribulations. And that's what's going to cleanse a people in these last days. Where are the witnesses? There's going to be martyrs because uh, they are willing to forsake sin. They, there's going to be witnesses for Jesus Christ because they are, will, they are willing and uh, understand uh, that there is a sin problem. Uh, so therefore, they're going to do whatever it takes to sacrifice themselves for Jesus Christ. I want that, don't you? Amen. Let's pray. Oh, Father, which art in heaven, we have come to a time when... Uh, we are going to have to make tough decisions, all of us are going to have to make tough decisions to follow you. As the Spirit of Prophecy says, no more milk. We're living uh, in the final hours and we see the threat. We can see them all over the news. Help us, Father, not to sleep as others do, but to be sober, watchful, vigilant, because uh, the enemy does not sleep. Lord, uh, Father God in heaven, give us boldness, we pray. Help us not to fear anything. Help us, Father, to do our best to surrender all to you so that sin will not gain the victory over us. Help us not to serve sin, uh, not to be slave to sin, but to be slave to righteousness. We thank you, Father, for being with us today. We ask for your blessing upon us as we continue to fellowship together. In Jesus' name, amen.